Today, we are going to talk about other members of the YBs. Yes, we are still uptown, and there are many YB sets that we didn't cover, as we did with the YGs. Don't worry, it will pop up soon. So, we back in White Plains with the BMB set of the YBs. If you want more of a grand scope of things, watch our previous video. BMB whose members also sometimes refer to themselves as the money-making mafia are Triple M operated, primarily on White Plains Road from 215th Street to 233rd Street in the Bronx. For those that are new here, just some quick background. Two of the highest-ranking big suits in BMB were Zico Nico and Q Don. Later on, Tyleek would also become a big suit in the gang, but before we get to him, let's talk about BB. BB was an extremely violent and dangerous member of BMB. He carried and shot guns, sold crack, and proudly touted BMB's norms in rap videos. Although he was previously arrested and served time for a few of these offenses, he was repeatedly shown leniency serving, for instance, less than two years in prison for shooting someone but was totally undeterred and kept committing crimes. BB further participated in BMB's narcotics conspiracy as a crack dealer. On August 27, 2009, BB was arrested in possession of a loaded 22 handgun in the vicinity of Edenwald by police officers on patrol, who were responding to a 911 call reporting shots fired. This led to BB's juvenile adjudication. BB was sentenced to probation, which he violated twice. On July 26, 2011, BB was arrested for a shooting committed on July 3, 2011, in the vicinity of Edenwald at 225th Street and Laconia Avenue. The victim, believed to be a member of the YSGs, was a resident of Edenwald who stated to the police that multiple perpetrators came behind him and fired shots at him, hitting his left calf. According to an eyewitness, approximately 40 people were fighting, and someone was yelling Edenwald. BB was identified as the shooter. He ultimately pled guilty in state court to assault in the second degree, and served less than two years in prison before being paroled, again, he later violated parole, and had to go back to jail. On October 10, 2011, Bibi participated in the beating and robbery of a woman at the 5 train station at Baychester Avenue just off of Boston Road. Bibi ultimately pled guilty to a felony count of robbery and was sentenced to a one to three year term of prison, of which he served less than two years and then violated parole. Bibi also participated in a brawl that led to the murder of an innocent 15 year old boy. Earlier in the day, two Fly ECG members had gone to a playground where BMB members were gathered and they fought each other. Later on, BMB would go to a baby shower in a basement near ECG for a deceased person's daughter. On the night of May 15, 2010, four guys, including Jeffrey Delmore, were outside the basement party. The group walked one individual to the Gun Hill train station and then decided to walk home. They lived in Eastchester Gardens, or ECG, one of BMB's chief rivals. Delmore and the two other individuals walked down Burke Avenue and then heard a gunshot. They saw a large crowd coming toward them, and one of them insisted that they should run, which they did. They got split up and Delmore would find himself trying to get low from BMB. One of the BMB guys caught up with Delmore in the vicinity of Bauk Avenue and Burke Avenue and knocked him to the ground. Afterward, D. Nick, another BMB member joined in the fight, punching and kicking Delmore. BB and other BMB members participated as well. While Delmore was on the ground, D. Nick stabbed him. The knife penetrated between five and six and a half inches into Delmore's body, puncturing his heart and right lung. Allegedly, a gunshot went off, and BMB ran back towards the direction of the basement party, and Delmore ran towards Eastchester Gardens. He would collapse a block and a half away. Meanwhile, BMB and ECG members were fighting, and Hav Goon had been sliced or stabbed. Goon was another big homie and had participated in a murder we covered in the Beach Avenue vs. Leland story. He would be indicted in 2016, and Case, who had participated in the murder with Hav Goon, was allegedly talking in jail, and that's how they got busted. Anyway, police came to the party, things died down, and everyone went their respective ways. Delmore would end up dying from his wounds, and Dean Nick knew that if law enforcement found out, somebody was snitching because he knew who was with him when it happened. It would later be determined that Delmore was not even a gang member. Dean Nick, though, had regularly sold marijuana and carried a firearm. As a result of this murder, he became a big homie in the gang. Some months after this, when Dean Nick was 18, his brother had gotten shot multiple times and was paralyzed. Hello BMB member, Aki, once mocked him about not getting back on the ops for what happened to his brother. 
we will talk about Aki in another video. Also, just a note, D-Nick had begun changing his life and getting money off of affiliate marketing. His brother had put him on to how to do it, moving along though. As far as BB goes, on January 15, 2013, he was found inside of an apartment on 3488 Fish Avenue in the Bronx five blocks away from the B-Road Spotten, which a search warrant was executed, uncovering a scale with marijuana residue, numerous small unused Ziploc bags, and three small bags of crack cocaine, as well as a loaded 45 caliber pistol. BB was found in the apartment with BMB members, Della and Fetty, and all three were arrested. BB was a proud and vocal member of the gang, participating in rap videos meant to further the rivalry among street gangs in the 47th precinct. For instance, BB participated in a rap video entitled Body Bags, posted on YouTube on February 27, 2012. D-Nick also appears next to BB in the videos. Next, let's talk about Polo Rel. I'll be flexing, flexing. Polo Rel was a ranking member of BMB who held status with a gang and was able to bring other members into BMB. Polo Rel served as one of the most public faces of BMB, bragging about the gang on social media and making rap music videos that boasted about the gang's violence and promoted the gang over its rivals. That Polo Rel used his music ambitions and talents to promote BMB and its violence as part of the gang wars. Polo Rel also committed numerous acts of violence with BMB. In 2010, he and other BMB members assaulted a rival Edenwald gang member near a nearby high school. Polo Rel used a cane to beat the victim. In the summer of 2011, Polo Rel and Tyleek went on a mission to shoot at rival New Orleans gang members in the middle of the day. After returning, Polo Rel and Tyleek, who shot the gun, told fellow BMB members and associates that they thought Tyleek hit a particular gang rival. In November 2012, Polo Rel participated in a gang assault on a crowded subway car with four other BMB members and associates, including Tyleek. One BMB member stabbed the victim several times, resulting in the loss of his kidney. In December 2013, hours after Polo Rel exchanged social media messages about a BMB member being stabbed by a rival gang and needing to retaliate with a gun, Polo Rel went to Edenwald with two other men to shoot at Edenwald members. Polo Rel wore a leather belt around his stomach as a holster for his revolver. At Edenwald, Polo Rel made a video of himself walking with the two other masked men and calling out Big Money's name a taunt in Edenwald's territory. Shots rang out, and a witness saw three men fleeing from Edenwald. Police caught Polo Rel immediately after he tried to hide his fully loaded gun in a car's wheel well. On March 28, 2014, Polo Rel and two other individuals were arrested by NYPD officers in the vicinity of White Plains Road and East 224th Street for robbery and possession of marijuana. The victim of the robbery reported that the perpetrators brandished a black firearm and forcibly took from the victim a cell phone, approximately $16, and earplugs. Police canvassed the area around the robbery with the victim who, approximately 35 minutes after the robbery, identified Polo Rel as one of the robbers. Incident to Polo Rel's arrest, officers seized a cell phone and earplugs, matching the victim's description of the victim's belongings, and approximately 39 baggies of marijuana, among other items. On September 1, 2014, Polo Rel pulled a revolver on an unlicensed livery cab driver. While in his cab near White Plains Road, Rel demanded his money. The victim tried to reach for the gun, and Polo Rel hit him multiple times on the head with the gun, causing bleeding and swelling. When the victim got control of the gun, Polo Rel ran off, saying that his friends his fellow BMB gang members would take care of the victim. Dennis nevertheless tried to chase Polo Rel, and then brought the gun to the local police station, where he reported the crime. Rel sold drugs with BMB gang members in BMB territory, including at the fort's location and at 216 Park, a playground in the neighborhood. On one occasion, Polo Rel possessed a firearm in 216 Park and placed it in a garbage can so that he or fellow gang members could use it to defend their territory. He sold marijuana as part of the drug trafficking conspiracy and had once been caught with 119 bags of marijuana that he brought to Rikers Island while visiting an inmate there. Witnesses and other evidence also revealed Polo Rel participating in other acts of violence, including his accompanying others in a shooting at a green Honda at Edenwald in the summer of 2011. 
He also has a conviction for a grand larceny in 2010 during which he took money from a fellow high school student who stated that Polo Rell bit him on his hand. And after all of this conduct, now in prison, he has disobeyed orders on multiple occasions. This includes engaging in sexual acts, not saying with a man, because I'm not sure, but that's what the documents say. Yeah, he was insolent to a staff member and also under investigation for an incident where one of his co-defendants had been stabbed. Polo Rell would participate in a murder in 2014, along with fellow BMB member, Tyleek, which we covered in our last BMB video. We will revisit that after we talk more about Tyleek. We wanted to do some background on some of these members, but the video would be entirely too long. Just know his life wasn't easy. He had never had a father figure, and the ones that did come into his life were involved in significant crime. He only learned from them how to be a criminal. His real dad never hugged him, supported him, never told him he loved him or encouraged education. The last time he saw his pops, he had returned from the hospital after being shot in both ankles leaving a neighborhood store. His pops told him, man up, you'll be alright. He has a brother, Ra, who we had also did a story about from his perspective and was actually our highest viewed video last year. But that's that, let's get into the crimes. On October 24, 2010, Tyleek was caught by police who observed him firing a handgun. The shooting occurred in a housing project where Tyleek did not live, but which was the home of a rival gang. On November 11, 2015, Tyleek and four other BMB members encountered a teenager they believed to be a rival gang member on a subway car. Tyleek and his accomplices surrounded the victim, beating and kicking him. As the victim slumped against a subway seat, another BMB member began stabbing him in his back. Police arrived before the victim was killed, but he lost a kidney. In a bid to escape capture, Tyleek attempted to blend in with passengers on the train. Tyleek sat next to a scared young woman, took one of her earphones and put it in his ear and instructed the woman to say that he was her girlfriend. Other bystanders recognized Tyleek as one of the attackers and he was arrested nonetheless, although his ruse did cause the innocent young woman to be detained for several hours as well. On December 18, 2012, Tyleek and two other BMB members pointed a gun at the head of an innocent cab driver, forcing the man to give up his personal possessions. On April 19, 2015, Tyleek traveled to the Edenwald housing project, the same development Kiki came from, in an attempt to kill a rival gang member. Again, Tyleek shot a defenseless man, who was unaware of Tyleek's presence until he realized he had been shot. Fortunately, the victim survived. Allegedly, Polo Rell was involved in this as well. Other things with Tyleek also includes participation in an unarmed brawl and armed narcotics trafficking. He has previously been convicted of forcibly robbing a woman who turned out to be an undercover NYPD officer and several other minor offenses. He too had been disobeying orders on multiple occasions and has threatened to physically harm someone. In regards to the murder of Ki Sean, aka Kiki, we will tell it a little different than we did in the previous video. So, on June 22, 2014, Tyleek used a 357 Magnum revolver to shoot Kiki in the back as he fled from BMB, killing him. On the night he was killed, Kiki and his friends attended a party in a house's backyard, held in an area of the Bronx that BMB regarded as its territory. At the time, BMB was engaged in a violent rivalry with the YSG's gang based in the Edenwald public housing project, and BMB members believed Edenwald had murdered two BMB members. Polo Rell himself had been stabbed by Edenwald members in the days leading up to the party. Polo Rell's social media messages sent before the party showed that Polo Rell knew he may have to use violence that night, and Polo Rell brought a gun. Tyleek and other BMB members arrived at the party after Kiki. BMB members including Tyleek and Polo Rell stood in their own group nearby. After a short time, Tyleek and the other BMB members left the party, walking up the narrow alley that linked the backyard party to the street. Kiki and his friends tried to leave the party shortly thereafter. When Kiki's group headed up the alley, the BMB members were at the top of the alley, blocking their exit to the street. Miyo, who was close to BMB boys, allegedly gave Polo Rell a 357 out of her purse. Polo Rell raised the 357 Magnum toward Kiki's group, but the big homie, Q Don, pushed his arm down. Kiki's group started to run back down the alley into the backyard. Tyleek told Polo Rell to give him the gun, then fired at least one shot, striking Kiki in the back and killing him. 
Tyleek later explained his actions by stating that Kiki had no business being there, meaning that because Kiki was from Edenwald, he should not have attended a party in BMB territory. Although another BMB member, Papa Ola also fired shots on the night of Kiki's murder, but was shooting a different weapon in the street outside the party. Edenwald was aligned with Boston Seeker, and there were other members of those cliques who had attended the party along with Kiki. Kerm, Dylan, Rick, Rich, Isaiah, and possibly Madge. It was alleged by a cooperator that he had picked up Isaiah after he saw him running and out of breath. He said Isaiah told him that Kerm had returned fire once Kiki had got shot. However, Isaiah denied this, saying that Kerm didn't have enough bullets to engage in a gunfight and left sometime before the shooting popped off. Some witnesses said that they heard at least 15 gunshots, so it was possible. But that's how that went down. But yeah, this about wraps it up though for this one. We will be back with more Uptown Story soon. But as always, stay low and thanks for watching.